Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel, the place where I talk about things that I find interesting while hoping you feel the same. Today we're taking an in-depth look under the hood of my passive-aggressive home automation AI built in the chassis of GLaDOS. I'm going to show you how the electronics inside work. This video is a detailed look into the hardware, but if you want a more general introduction of the project, uh, please check the video linked. I will be making a separate video on how the software of the robot works. Let's go check what's inside. Outside the unit you can see three cables going in. One is a HDMI output from the Raspberry Pi that's inside the unit. And then there are two power connectors. One is 5 volt input for the Raspberry Pi and the other one is line voltage for the mechanics power supply. In the front there's the mechanical eye thing with the round LCD display. One multicolor addressable LED NeoPixel and then there's the infrared camera. The chassis itself is 3D printed and hand painted. The main body of the unit has been cut from 2mm aluminum sheet with a handheld router. The good surface finish has been achieved by applying a blackboard type uh, plastic sheet to it, so it's vinyl wrapped. The texture on the vinyl matches quite closely with the texture I get out of the Prusa print bed. So even the plates look 3D printed. The chassis itself is held together by magnets. There are magnets in these like small holders. And the cover parts have the other magnet in there. So this just snaps into place. So far these are just slapped in place and nothing is really holding them but the head is stationary for now so it doesn't matter. Then the top cover comes off the same way. It has, has been made from 3D printed uh, segments which have been glued together using epoxy and they have been thoroughly surface finished and made like aperture sciency glossy. The small accent has been painted there by hand. The whole unit has been built currently on a lab stand, which is just a heavy base with a metal stick. And it's being held by the stand arms. The brain of the whole operation is Raspberry Pi 4, 8 GB model. And it runs the software and the Python scripts. It has uh, multiple things connected over USB, things like the the re-speaker microphone array also acts as a sound card, so it has the sound output via a uh, 3.5 mm output. And the cable goes directly into an Adafruit digital amplifier. Basically you just plug this baby into 5 volts and give it some audio and connect it to speakers and that's it. The speakers are built inside the earlobe housings. These are basic paper cone speakers. There's a set of two of them, one in both ears. So this thing actually has a stereo sound, even though the uh, GLaDOS sy speech synthesizer produces mono audio. So technically you can listen to music of this thing, even though it sounds absolutely terrible. With this setup, the onboard audio sounds actually quite terrible because the speakers are basically standing in open air. I use the equalizer built into the Linux, the Alsa Mixer EQ, I think, to remedy the situation. And I used a software called Room EQ Wizard and a calibration microphone to make pink noise sound as it should. And it helped quite a bit. That thing sounds much more massive and it feels like it's more present in the space you are in compared to when the EQ is completely turned off. What this thing would benefit from is a companion cube subwoofer. The re-speaker microphone array is nice that it has four microphones and it does all the math inside the unit in a self-contained way. It does noise cancellation, echo cancellation, and it tries to pinpoint the direction where the sound is coming from. So it is possible to run a one line of code and get the direction in degrees where the sound came from. 
So once I make the neck mechanism for the robot, it is possible to turn the head automatically to the direction of the sound. Then we can use the infrared camera to figure out if there is face in there. And if there is a face in the direction where the sound came from, we can use the X and Y coordinates where the face was found to p further pinpoint the direction where the robot needs to point to. So it looks like it's staring you in the face. There is also a ring of LEDs around the red one there. So it basically looks like an Amazon Echo. But I have disabled that functionality in software because I don't like my GLEDAS to be glowing blue from the inside. You can easily control those LEDs from Python. Here you can see the main axle of the unit which has the servo mount attached to it and it has a high, high torque servo there. This is connected by this linkage to the back of the eye. There are two linear rails mounted into the servo assembly, which the eye rides on. These are just spare parts from Prusa printers, same as they use in the Mark III. And then there's the linear bearing there. Mounted behind the eye assembly is the Pololu uh, Maestro servo controller, which has all the servos connected to it. And it takes instructions from the Raspberry Pi use over the USB. The whole thing is powered from a Meanwell power supply there. This thing only powers the mechanics. All the computers and sound devices are being powered by the Raspberry Pi to avoid uh, feedback loops and that kind of thing. I tried powering it from the fi same 5 volt power supply, but it made a hell of a lot of noise. It still makes some, but it's very quiet compared to that one. Currently my unit has two axes of motion. One is the eyes zoom direction and one is the how open the eyelids are. I'm using the Pololu Maestro control center on my Windows desktop with a long ass USB extension cable with the controller directly connected to the Windows computer for the easy configuration and demo. So for example, I can move the eye zoom back and forth. And I can basically puppet the device from the unit. And I can open and close the eyelids. Here you can see that position of the slider and the little blue dot in the software is actually where the software is telling the servo to go to and here I have set some maximum speeds and accelerations for the servos as well as the endpoints which are configured here which is the maximum and minimum position for the servo and these are saved on the controller so for example if I try to cl oh, close the eyelids too much the servo controller does not let me do that otherwise it would wreck the plastic gears inside the head quite quickly so i have set the minimum and maximum endpoints in the firmware i have created few sequences here mostly for the startup routine like for example oh it's you it sets the servo positions to these waits a certain time and moves on. It's been a long time. How have you been? These are used in the software in such a way if there is handmade animation for a certain line it will always use the hand-coded animation instead of the random position. Oh, it's you. It's been a long time. How have you been? Here are the hard-coded routines and the configurations and this is getting saved on the chip then there are these default options that once you power the device on what will it do it will go to this set position here which is like the default idling position of the GLaDOS but it looks great at where, while it's standing while it's speaking it deviates from these positions and then it's coded to go back into the resting position here Behind there, just flapping in the breeze, you can see the TNC4 processor daughterboard. 
that controls the eye. Here you can see the servo that controls the eyelids opening and closing. There's also all the cables that go from the TNC to the LCD display and the Adafruit NeoPixel ring light around it. There is also one single NeoPixel 5mm LED mounted here, which is also being driven by the TNC there. Idea is to have some sort of visual feedback when the machine is listening to me or not. Behind the Raspberry Pi there's also a wireless receiver for a keyboard and mouse, so I can actually like use the command line if I need to. So far it's hooked up into my home cinema, so I can just configure it and make the software restart if there is an issue. It's also mandatory to have an aperture background on your Raspberry. Let's give it a test. Hey, Tell me. What's the weather like today? Today, it's expected to be rainy, with the surface temperatures ranging from, hold on, 3 degrees to the low of, give me a minute, 2 degrees Celsius. There you can see that the system didn't have that few numbers in stock, so it had to fetch them from the text-to-speech API because somebody has already generated voice samples for 2 and 3. It basically took no time at all to get the data. Most of the robot has been printed with single white Prusament PET G filament. It's a standard white color, so it's easy to match with paint. This is not painted and this is painted. They are quite close. Some of the parts like the ear pieces here and the bezel of the eye have been printed with a jet black version of the Prusament PET G, which is just basic black filament. I have also used some of Prusa's uh, Galaxy Black PET G, which is basically dark gray with glitter in it, and that has been used in, for example, the magnetic tape here. Some of the accents, for example here, the Roller underneath is black, but the cover is made from the Galaxy Black. And these like strap parts here are made from the Galaxy Black. And of course the eye, the whole eye assembly is made from the Galaxy Black. There are a few accents here and there, like the little eye flag and the, whatever that thing is and the holders for the other holders. I don't really know if these things have a name. These, ha these are just some random scrap gray PLA I had laying around. These nuts are covered with little plastic parts that are just from the kilo section from the hardware store. These are regular M4 nuts underneath and the plastic nibs are just pushed on. I think they give a nice finished look to the whole robot. And then the accent here is just a dual color insert, insert printed on the Prusa. I have tried to print everything in such a way that the out for, outward facing side is uh, against the print bed. So I can get really nice surface finish on these. And to finish my list off, around the LCD there is a small light guide between the LED element and the screen that has been printed from a clear PET G, also from Prusament. That's the only clear part. Most, most of the parts have been either glued in or screwed in. There's a lot of fasteners and metal hardware in this thing that I had to buy like one piece at a time, as Mr. Volt didn't release a bill of materials for this thing. Had to figure out most of the stuff on the go. But it's there, it looks great. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, then you can stick your thumb somewhere else. Big thanks to the ghost to my 900 subscribers. 
I still have about a hundred to go with before I can monetize my channel, which is one of my goals. So subscription to the channel would be greatly appreciated. If I have some income from YouTube, it would be possible for me to make the videos more often. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.